Patron, or Patron, as I've been calling it annoyingly for the past week, is a city builder similar to Banished in terms of era, uh, in terms of uh, style, uh, and, uh, you know, just in terms of the type of game it is. <laughs> uh, we're making a lot of comparisons to Banished uh, when we play this, and when we get into the actual gameplay, you'll fully understand why. Um, but it is uh, reasonably priced, nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, you can get a pretty good few hours out of this if you're somebody who uh, maybe do not does not own uh, several uh, city builders, especially banished, um, or if uh, if you are maybe new to city builders, this might be a good one. Uh, the normal mode is what I would consider to be probably hard for like a newcomer for sure, um, but uh, they they have a number of options. And in terms of how you can uh, customize your difficulty experience, so plenty of options here. You can go through, and if you want, you could take it and take take it all the way down um, uh, to something that's super easy, or you can make it fucking extreme. And I played extreme just to check it out, uh, and I I don't I don't believe I played on I also played on a difficult island back here. You can choose your islands, right? And there's some that are challenging, and they have soil soil fertility uh, or richness and uh, weather uh, items to consider as well. Uh, so I played on a challenge map in Extreme, and I couldn't even get uh, food generating buildings up before everybody starved. <laughs> I, I didn't even build them homes. I was just like, no, bitches, you're hunting and gathering right now, okay? And you're sleeping on rocks, and they all fucking died of hunger. So <laughs> I, you can make it pretty extreme if you want to, if you want some kind of experience. Uh, so let me say, go back here. Uh, you can also choose a banner. You can uh, name your town, uh, uh, and uh, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, world generation is 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 a fixed map, uh, but you can place your city wherever you want, or your starting town, town center, or whatever, uh, wherever you want. Uh, let me see, Soul's Town. This is the one that uh, you can see. There's nothing here because there's nothing there. I couldn't get it. <laughs> I couldn't make it happen. Uh, let's see. So new save I for B. Um, this is the save we're going to get into. Now, this is going to be a, well, so first let's go over it. Um, I'm in year 22, August, uh, year 22. Um, the town is called James James. <laughs> I don't know what we were doing. Uh, population, I have 195 adults, and then there's, uh, uh like teenagers or whatever, and there's children. So, um, we're going to get in and take a look at this, but you should know that these load times can sometimes take a long time. Um, so, uh, I'll go ahead and stop and... <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. Should I set a timer or something? This is a long one. <laughs> and go. All right. So that took that took uh, 22 seconds by my clock. Um, but I I also spoke through a chunk of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess probably 33 or 34 seconds uh, worth of load time. Uh, now when you start a new map, it loads instantaneously. Like there's no problem whatsoever, but I'm not gonna show you a new map because there's nothing there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this town that I'm working on. Um, first off, the town center is right here. Uh, you can go through and you could put down decrees. You unlock these decrees and we'll go over that in a moment. Uh, and you unlock, uh, sorry, then you um, activate them and you have a certain amount of influence and that influence is, uh, um, partitioned off into each one of these decrees. Some of them are one, some of them are two. Later on, there are probably some that are three or something. I'm guessing down here, some of these are expensive. Oh yeah, 10, yeah. Town celebrations. So uh, this is this is something that would, would be very costly. Uh, so there's a, still a lot of game here. I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm about mm, through the second act of this, right? And there's one more act left. Um, and so you could probably generate a pretty good amount of influence over time. And then, of course, stack them however you want. Over here on the right, this is your happiness. Uh, you see I have a B plus or something. Um, happiness is, this con is contributed to by um, uh, a number of different factors uh, in terms of, like, their environment and everything, right? Um, <clears throat> see health, uh, safety, immigration, loyalty, religion, education, basic goods, luxury goods, taxes, housing. Um, 
almost all this stuff has been pretty easy to manage. Honestly, you can see most of them are 99s. Uh, taxes, 14. They're really upset about the taxes right now. Like, they're really upset. So this tooltip over here is actually about taxes. I think they're going to riot or something. We'll see. Anyways, most important building, the town center right there. Okay. Um, I'm not going to show you every single building individually, but we're going to, uh, uh, but I'm going to kind of generalize some of them. You see, these ones are all houses, right? So houses here. Uh, your, obviously your smaller buildings are all going to be houses. All of your brown buildings are brown rooftop buildings. That's going to be all of your like pr production, um, uh, and uh, you know just 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 basically just production uh, buildings. Over here, these are your docks. These ones I, we are going to click through. Um, here you can actually go through and do trade deals, and so you can have you could basically have your docks working full time to keep your inventory set to a certain target. So you could just say, I want to have bricks at you know a thousand so buy or sell automatically without my input until we reach that target and they're going to take a fee for that right so it's a laziness fee uh i forgot i upgraded this so i should go through and do some more um each each entry uh counts as basically think of it kind of like a different or each sorry each dock is a different ship so you can if you want to cut through like my, my quantity is insane right now because i'm producing just stupid amounts of bricks i don't know how it happened um <laughs> and and i built they're all brick houses too man um and what i had to do to sell if i want to sell them i have to go to each one of these and then set each trade deal for bricks see there's another one here uh there's one here oh did i click on the same one for yeah so two of them are actually selling bricks so i'm trying to get that number down and i make money off the deal and then over here you could buy and sell and then you could you could say okay i want to have um you know some strawberries so i could say oh, i should we'll sell some stone so a lot of stone so we're gonna go ahead and sell 700 the maximum of this particular dock can store base is 300 uh over here you can see trade cargo capacity is increased by 75 percent so i paid into the upgrades in order to take this from uh ship one to uh, our cargo capacity you know zero percent increase to a 75 percent increase which is why i'm able to do 700 um and then i can go over here and trade this and then what happens is uh the money is immediately uh, exchanged there's no boat that comes in um and so you don't get the cool little graphic of the waiting for the boat to come in or anything like that it just basically says okay arrival times 28 days and then boom you just do the sale and that's it so it kind of acts as, as a as a quickie mart for me um whenever i need something i'll just i was like oh man i need like there's a couple times actually i almost ran out of food because i just was not paying attention right um and and I, which by the way i am gonna run out of food again uh and it might actually even happen in the save uh, i showed told you earlier that i have 137 kids right well let me take a drink We're gonna have a little talk about the birds and the bees. <laughs> Those 138 kids down here, um, yeah, it was the children, 138 kids, are going to very quickly <laughs> turn into uh, 250 uh, kids, right? So uh, <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna get pretty packed around here and I do not have the expansion capabilities right now or time uh, to, to really sit here and manage everything. Your inventory space is low uh, to fix that problem. So let me go and actually put, put another, uh, put a uh, uh, let me see, where was it? Can we play, can we play the Jeopardy theme without getting DMCA'd? Uh, oh wait, it's probably not even there. It's a town building. I'm so dumb. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is in here? Market. Oh my god, look at that how many times. <laughs> Pottery works if you hear your warehouse right there. God damn it. Oh god. I haven't played this game in like three three days, so please bear with me. Alright, here we go. We'll put another one of these down. All this is gonna do is increase my my uh, uh my inventory space across the board to like everything. When you click on a um uh, click on any of your like a depot or a warehouse or a large warehouse or whatever, uh it basically links them all together. So me adding that um added capacity for up to uh, well, you'll see it up to, to 70,000 because each one of these is 10,000. Depots are like 2,000 or something. Um, and in it, and, and again, in this, you can basically see everything. This is going to be a very, like, like, like a nerd heavy um, episode, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so in it, you can see everything that you own across all of your depots and all of your inventory space. You can also see the price that it could sell for, which is pretty nice. I can sit there and say, okay, what do I have okay, of quantity that I could sell for a certain price? And I can see I have a fuck ton of glass, uh, and glass sells for a pretty penny. So what I would do is I could go to the docks and I would just say, okay, start selling glass because I'm not using it this fast. Start selling glass and then take it to, um, uh, and then you know, and get us paid. 
and I'd make just stupid amounts of money off that. I should probably do that right now. <laughs> it's a real scenario, but um, uh, yeah, we're seventy thousand. Let's see resources. You can look at the actual item. You can go through and you could click and you could see. Uh, let's pick an item that we're selling, like bricks, for example. We we're just looking at bricks. Let's see, we look at bricks. We could see this is the total that we're making. You can see I've done. I've taken steps to uh, to, uh, to to mitigate. <laughs> The, ins the insane output uh, of them. Let me see. 5,478. And then over here. Yeah. Oh, oh sunken ship. Okay. Let's finish that, that talk. Uh, but in that chart, you could see that uh, uh, I was able to kind of bring that number down a little bit. So I'm not producing so many. And then I could... Then I could turn around and optimize another uh, line of product, like, for example, getting the glass out instead of focusing on brick. So these are random events that happen. You can disable them if you want. But you have to do that when you make the state, when you uh, make your worlds. Um, but these can be helpful in, in, in almost every case. Uh, so the ship has sunk off the coast uh, of our fair city. We should send a, a search party and see what they can find. Uh, organize a search party and focus on helping any survivors. So this will gain us four adults and five children. Uh, or send a party to look for goods floating around the town. Is anything we can retrieve? And this will give me a bunch of items. Now, um, this, uh, in no most cases, I would take the people. But in this case, I'm going to take the resources. Uh, very, like, FTL style of random events, right? Uh, but there's more to this. There's more to this. Uh, you can click on, you can see the ins and out. And you can see when I started selling bricks. Uh, you can see out when I started selling the bricks. Oh, sorry. Uh, over here is where you can see where I'm uh, selling bricks. And actually, that's also the out. Um, but uh, you can see 396 sold all the way up to 500 something. So I'm producing a little bit less. I'm slowly getting, I'm obviously slowly getting the number down, which is why you're seeing this number start to dip. Uh, and this is what makes this game pretty awesome. Because you can, I can now go, okay, I'm a quantity 2,777. I want to say that was a lot more than that. Uh, when we first started, like it was definitely 3,000 something. Yeah, we're going through them fast. Um, and then what I could do is I could go through here and I could set the maximum quantity. So this UI is wonky. The UI is wonky. Did I mention the UI is wonky? The UI is wonky. It's very wonky. Let me see. Da, 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 da. It's so weird. Uh, let me see. So I want to say uh, I probably don't need any more than a thousand bricks at a time. Right now, my inventory is a complete free fall. But we were just streaming and just and then just um, uh, dicking around the game. I, I felt like I kind of beat the game for the most part because it got too easy. Like it was right now I'm on super easy mode, uh, even though I'm not. I'm in normal mode, right? Uh, but the game is just too cake. The reason why I say the game is getting easy is because I managed to just basically pull in a fuck ton of money, like so much. As soon as they're leaving, oh, fuck, let them leave. Let them leave. Um, I managed to pull in a ton of money. Uh, and so my income, because I, I started fishing like crazy. Uh, and so I just basically getting a ton of fish in and then turning around and selling it. I started just selling, 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 uh, and that earned me, you know, just tons of cash. And of course, uh, on top of that, all of your, all of your, um, uh, people are, uh, they're all taxpayers. So that's why they're pissed off about the tax right now. That's because I had some taxes on them. I'm, I, I removed the tax decree, uh, but they're still upset, uh, which is why some of them are leaving, uh, which is better for our food supply. <laughs> um, but this is your progression here, and and it basically costs money. That's the, everything else you can very easily build, you know, with rent, whatever buildings you unlock, um, and you will have these resources on it. Like five tools, like that's a joke. <laughs> that's a complete joke. Once you get a good steady income, the game becomes just a breeze. Uh, I have unlocked majority of these things. I was going to show you. Is, where is where I'm at? Yeah, here we go. The inn. Um, and you can see I have 50,000 gold right now. So I could I could buy my way through almost, almost the rest of this thing. Uh, no, I'm kind of overdoing that a little bit. Maybe, maybe I'm about to hear. Um, and the only thing that's stop, stopping me is, is the resources and time. Uh, and you'll make 300 bricks. Well, I mean, what we were just talking about. I had like 4,000 bricks or something like that when we started this save. So this is where, <clears throat> you know, I feel like the game, uh, if you want to play this game, if you're a city builder, uh, um, aficionado, you will probably like to play this game on hard and not on, uh, on normal. Um, and hopefully it's not the same case there because again, once I got in that groove of just, uh, getting a ton of fish from all of my fishing guys who are fishing out of the same river, uh, or river, river, river bank rather, man. All right. Let's see my Lord, the King's advisors have sent a list of requests. No official reason has been noted. Okay. So let's see. Hmm. They're bleeding us dry. Uh, but we can't go against the King. Okay. So taking 26 gold. Oh, that's, uh, it's gold, um, gold, gold. Okay. 
some plums. Uh, peasants, laborers, loyalty, 20. Okay, let me see. Set up for make this supplies as possible. Nah, let's give it to them. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Um, this brings me to that, my next uh, issue with the game. Is that the king... I, I spent the entire stream, I think two days of the stream, uh, where and random events like that would happen. And, I, and whenever it involved the king, um, who you never meet or anything, uh, I always just basically wrote him off. I was like, nah, whatever, dude. Screw that guy, right? Like, I'm, try I'm, I'm trying... I'm trying to... You know, like, or get my de my independence going here. <laughs> um, but nothing ever comes of it. Nothing. As a matter of fact, like, I, I gave him the finger like, like 15 different times, and then he sent me a fucking fruit basket. You know, so clearly there's no, there, like, that system has not been, like, kind of linked together uh, in terms of, like, user flow uh, when you're, like, interacting with different story elements. Because um, it just randomly pulls them from a hat. <laughs> All right, let's back up here and take a look at the city. We got to look at a couple more things. Uh, the game does not lack for panels, and I am a huge fan of that. Uh, playing Timberborn right now, one of the things that I miss is graphs. So, I mean, you guys have already seen like the, the graphs here are great. All these UI elements are movable. They're bulky. They're not that good looking. Um, they're a little bit big. There's no UI scale, unfortunately. Uh, if you're playing on like a 4K monitor, boy, this game will probably be perfect on that. Problem with playing on a big monitor is that you your UI elements are typically too small. Um, but this, <laughs> it's gonna look great. Uh, let me see, residents, they have their own thing here. You can have that open if you like. Um, let me see, annual, this is your combat log. You can put that over here. There's no combat. I mean, you know, it's, it's the log. Um, let me see, uh, resident, I already pulled that up. Oh, gosh, what other things can I pop up here? Let's see, view, option, additional panels, town hall. Um, let me see. <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, that one doesn't stay open. Research, well, that doesn't stay open either. And then jobs board, this stays open, though. There we go. <laughs> so you could have uh, quite a few uh, things open at once if you want. So you can see this is my here. The jobs board we haven't looked at yet. The jobs board is where you go to assign people to side uh, 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 labor to different professions. Uh, big complaint about this is that people people from the worker field do not automatically graduate from that into a space if somebody were to die or if you build something. You have to manually go through and say, yes, please, plus one. Um, so <clears throat> that's that's a bit of a problem for me. You can see I have most things un unlocked. Uh, in Keeper, I've, I've un had that unlocked. It's not built. Uh, and that's actually the case for a lot of this stuff. I have I have them, but you know I just don't have them built or anything yet. Um, each window does have a, uh, a help <clears throat> UI tooltip, and th these are actually be very helpful. Um, so that I really appreciate that. Uh, but one thing that does um, that I'm not uh, that I don't appreciate. No, the one thing that I that uh, I think could use a little bit of improvement is when I go to a son of a. <laughs> Hold on a second. When I go to, let me see here. And I look over this, it says, honey, this is the, what your honey is, uh, uh, what the production of this apiary is doing, right? <clears throat> and I look over here at, let me see, at the item over here, every time, that's actually a really bad example, but everywhere you see an item, uh, you don't unfortunately get kind of the same uh, uh, information. So it's it's almost like every every entry in every uh, like underneath stock like has its own tag for whatever the tooltip's gonna be and it doesn't there's no unity between them right like they're all written at a, at a different time, so it kind of makes things a little bit difficult when you're looking at your like let's say you're looking down here and like some of these things like labor luxury says oh cool it's beer tobacco candles brandy so I know those satisfy labor luxury, uh, and then I look at beer over here where I'm like you know an inventory screen. Um, and I see uh, it's a labor luxury item producing distilleries. That's actually very helpful. Uh, but I go over here to sell it and there's no information here. Is there beer here? Yeah, beer. There's no information here in terms of like what I can see. Well, okay, well, if I need to get something, I get, uh, uh, like the laborers are upset because I don't have any, um, uh, labor luxuries. I could go and buy some, but which one of these things would do it? Um, there's just no unity in any of the tool tips basically and i wish that there was like like, like world of warcraft or like any mmo where every item has the same tooltip basically um nope here we go convict ship arrives so this will basically give me four people and then it'll reduce safety but safety hasn't really had any effect on anything um 
up to a point. Like there's a, there was one point where the merchants said they weren't happy or they weren't secure, and I put up a bunch of watchtowers, and everybody was fine with it. Uh, let me see. Or we could send them away. Safety goes up. Let's just send them away. That tooltip was great. It had a lot of information on it, but it feels like they're just disjointed. Um, let me see. Probably the one, the one part that uh, um, I mean, uh, like I'm telling you, this is a good game. This is a good game. But when you're when you're in the uh, same space as a game like Banish that's had years to build, uh, to build on itself, um, like you're gonna be compared. <laughs> but you, there's no connection to any of the um, uh, to, to any of the residents. Uh, in Banish, whenever you click on a house, you see the people who are in it, right? Um, oh, it's fucking right there. Son of a bitch will fucking get out of there. Um, but in but in general, though, like you can click on a person and see who they are. Uh, you can see where, where they live, what their paths are and everything. Here, there's no clicking on a person. It feels very impersonal in that, in that way. Uh, I'm so glad that we found that, actually. Um, there are a couple things like that that I've, that I've discovered. Yeah, like income and all that. Um, but no, that's a good one. Uh... But there's just not a not lot of connection with the people. Not not enough to really care about the happiness because the happiness isn't really. I mean, it's so easy to keep up. It's kind of like okay, well, I don't, I don't even really pay attention to them. They're just lemmings, you know. They just kind of walk around, just do things, and they die. Um, I don't look at it and say, oh, that person died. Like in Banish, we were always just like, oh man, remember that person? Yeah, they didn't live for 89 years. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was the blacksmith. Yeah, yeah. Like Mima in Auction Not Included. It's like you get attached to those characters, right? Probably a different, bad example there, but still. Uh, here, you can't even click on a person, like just to even see what they're, uh, you know, who do they who do they work for or anything. What's cool though is you can see the children walk around with the, with the parents. Um, so what I do sometimes is like when I, she says she's homeless, right? Or she's she's upset with the housing. In this case, I'm willing to bet. Oh, she's went to where? Oh, she went in here to grab this. Um, but uh, but they'll walk into a house, and what it is, they're not upset that they're homeless. They're upset that their housing situation sucks because they live with their kids, right? So there's a lot of really great depth to some of these things in terms of like how these mechanics work, right? If you cover over them, you see it says. Uh, uh, this citizen is homeless. Yeah, so it's not not true. Um, they have well, let me see actually Did to be homeless. Let me see occupy total 96. Oh, it doesn't tell me if there's homeless here. Damn. You should tell me that House is total occupy 80. I mean, I guess you could probably figure out that it's not it's not a one-to-one -one families to, to houses Sometimes multiple families live in multiple in, in the same house um, but uh, That person probably lives in a house or in, in a shelter rather and they're just upset with the living conditions. And so I like that. I like that. Uh, there's the heat and cold. Um, we're, are we going to get to a winter? Let me see. September. So winter's coming up. I typically don't have any issues in winter because we have so much uh, firewood. And then if we need firewood, uh, I'll just go over here and just buy it. Right? No big deal. How many people are leaving? One, two. We lost two people there. Okay. They're just upset about the freaking taxes. Consider the current taxes towards them is unfair. Gosh, can I just give them some money? Like a freaking stimulus or something? <laughs> Make them shut up. <laughs> let's see. Um, uh, let's swap out. Let's swap out the essential goods. Let's so, open our overview here. This is the other. I forgot to show you guys this. Uh, see the happiness regarding taxes. Okay, so their happiness regarding taxes is not great, which means I'm being. I'm taxing the peasants somewhere. Let's see central budgeting. Is it this one? Let me see. Which one is central budgeting? Let's see. No. Can I get a tooltip on these things so I can see what these are? <laughs> Propaganda, housing contribution. This is good for them, though. Housing contribution is good for them. These stupid peasants, they don't even know what's good for them. <laughs> housing contribution. Let me see taxes, peasants. Oh, okay. Gosh, maybe it is that. Damn, they really don't like that, huh? All right, fine. Well, that was supposed to be good for you. It's going to help. A homeless family left your city. Oh, maybe maybe somebody was homeless. <laughs> Let's build a watchtower. Another watchtower. We'll put it right here. So when you start it, you have, um, you have, it tells you what resources you need, which is great. And you also prioritize it. Gosh, you guys are so fast. I'm um, also at 10 speed, so. Uh, but you can also, you can um, uh, uh, prioritize it if you need to. There's only one priority. It's either priority or it's not priority. Uh, go over here and you can remove your building this way. And it just disappears. Just poof. And uh, depending on your uh, new game settings, uh, will determine how much of that you get back. It's like partial or full or none or something like that. 
Uh, so we have a couple people that we have more people that are homeless, but you know if they leave that's actually gonna benefit us because like I said our food is going down We click on this and we can pull this up and we can see Ooh, that's a bad look right there. That's um That's a bad look. What's up with that? Wow, so man we we oh that's apples son of a food <laughs> I was like what the hell what are we doing in freaking August? Uh, all right, let's see. So our total is uh, doing okay. Uh, let me see. Our usage is not too bad. I mean, we're in and our out is a little more than our in. Previously, uh, okay, so it's flipped. It's flipped a little bit, actually. Um, okay. So, yeah, something to look out for. In a, in a couple of years, that, that's going to be a problem, probably. And actually, with the way that they're growing, 206 adults now, 150 children, um, I could see that becoming, uh, <laughs> happening a lot faster. Anyways, so, another really cool feature about this. No firewood in stock. What? Oh, yeah, look, the firewood disappeared, see? So what we do, this is great. See, you guys are getting all the real, the real-time stuff. Okay, hold on a second. I know I have the game going at 10 speed, so everything's moving at a million miles an hour. Firewood, uh, we go over here, firewood, bam, and then I just say, okay, cool, I just need a lot, so give me a 700 trade, which one did I do with that one, yeah, okay, and then, uh, firewood also, trade, and then here, now, I can build a bunch of these things, and all I have to do is just have somebody employed there, firewood, firewood, where are you, oh, the resources flipped, my bad, firewood, trade, and you can see this is how long I have until basically I can trade again. But this is all going to come in. Um, and then I'm assuming people are going to come and get it out of here, right? Because it has its own... Uh, oh, does it not? I wonder if it doesn't have its own inventory. Some buildings have their own inventory. If we're production buildings, we look at... Okay, that's not production, production building. Hold on a second. Um, they have an inventory uh, of their... Oh, that's a shelter. Dang it. Here we go. Inventory. That just tells you what's in it. So it, what's in it right now is uh, the upkeep uh, items that you need. Oh, this is perfect because I have to upgrade this. Um, so upkeep cost me 160 coins a year or and 150 uh, lumber per year. So you're always like you have your forestry and all this stuff going um, like nonstop. And what they produced for me is uh, 380 mushrooms a year. What's the inventory? These are the items that have not been carried to their destination or have been taken to it. Like for example, the lumber to pay for uh, their upkeep. So it's a, it's a trickle down thing, right? It's a, it's a trickle effect. It's not something that um, uh, that comes out annually. It it, it comes out uh, slowly over time as they bring the items to them throughout the year. It's a very cool system, man. Like it's a really cool system. All right, these things are done. Looks like we have our, our firewood. And what I would do is probably go through and just go ahead and buy another another lot here. I like I mean. Again, like once you get into the groove and you're making money and you could just basically buy your way out of it Which just makes the the rest of the experience, you know <laughs> uh, I actually I'm, I'm I'm kind of feeling like I might I'm a very well Like a super strong maybe maybe um, dang it. I might play a short match just to see uh, like on hard mode uh, Just to see how how the upstart is once you get past the first few years, uh, you, you, that's when you kind of start to find your groove, or you realize that wow, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, the first time I played it was like year three. Uh, I I I just wiped completely and start over. Uh, over here, this is my um, my ranch, uh, orchard, farm, island, and uh, I have a couple of houses here. Somebody again here, they're upset about what uh, safety. So this this person is uh, unhappy due to internet costs to upgrade their house. Well, it's not upgrade their house. Um, it's uh, they want a watchtower, so I build a watchtower, then they'll feel happy, or they'll leave. We see watchtowers are here. Watchtower. Okay. We'll put it. It's got to put it within range. Gosh, I didn't give. Why? Why are you worried? You guys are here in the nuff in the nowheres. No one's gonna come out here and do anything. Dang! I really left myself no space, huh? Oh, here we go. I'll put it right here. Jeez. Man. <laughs> Digging back into this. Let's go and slide down. Uh, let's find something we just placed, like that watchtower, for example. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, this watchtower right here. Uh, so, from this window, we could go through and we could do some upgrades if we want. We can say uh, insulation. This basically just makes it so that you can see this is the upkeep. Upkeep costs less, so you could save on wool and all. Or wool, I'm sorry. Um, uh, wood. Um, <clears throat> and you can see their upkeep here. Uh, oh, and it's actually already okay. 
it's reduced there. Uh, guardhouse. I do not have guardhouse unlocked. Actually, I actually might be able to do it right now. Let me see. Guardhouse. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so there you go. We'll unlock that one. Let that go for a little bit. And then I'll have my guard. I can upgrade all of my watchtowers to guardhouses. I was hoping for like sniper roost or something like that, but I don't guess maybe it doesn't really exist at this time. Uh, are people still leaving? Housing shortage. Some of your families are nowhere to live. More houses. Okay, okay, fine. But then you guys are going to keep making babies. I'm up to 213 adults. Ugh, I had this whole area out here. Just wanted to expand on. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, the Holy Church again. Church dignitaries are offering us a way to gain some favor with uh, with them. Though that's really just a way for them to tell us what they want done. Indeed, fine. Send them what they want. Let's do them a favor. Give them some strawberries, some gold, and beer, of course. Uh, religion goes up. My religion is actually really, really low because I've just been telling these guys whatever. But it hasn't had any negative impact on anything that I've done so far. Uh, so I kind of want to bring it up and see what happens. <laughs> like, do I get an achievement for some kind of, for like maxing out the religion? Because if I, if, if I could benefit from, from religion, I will do it, man. <laughs> Let's see. Stone house. We'll put this out here. Uh, let me see. Oh, you know, I kind of had a grid going and I can mess that up with just putting that down. Oh God. Well, you know, it's fine. I'm, I'm not going to come back and play the save again. This save, save is retired. Oh, pull up the grid, by the way. Uh, this is going to be um, an automatic in the future. The developer made a comment saying that uh, he's going to make, in a future update, uh, this automatically pop up whenever you go to select an item, which is kind of handy. Because when I first started building, I was building over here. Let me pull out the grid to really screw with you guys. Um, but yeah, look at this. <laughs> I was not lining anything up at all. I didn't know about the grid, about the grid feature. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> um, I, I, you know what? I look at it as like this. It looks more realistic, you know, like if you look over here, it's like, oh my gosh, look at these nerds. <laughs> look at these guys. You go over here. It's like, oh man, this, this is the party place over here. Like this is, this is the real, this place got soul, right? Not this. Look at this. What is this? White bread. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. What else? Damn, there's so many things. Uh, so each of these houses I just put down, guess what? None of them are insulated, and oops, none of them are stone houses. Did I hit the wrong thing? Stone house. What the heck? Upgraded stone house. Oh, how did you guys get screwed? <laughs> Alright, so what I would do is go through and just go click, and then click. Okay, there we go. Click, click. Just basically get them all done. Click, click, upgrade, make sure everybody's good. So everybody's a stone house, first of all. And that should take care of my homeless problem. But they're still mad about the taxes. Labor's because of this character. What, what, what do you want? Oh, wait. It's, it's probably going to change the new year, right? Let me see. These guys are upset right now because they don't have enough laborers running around to get them stuff. Uh, I have 75 people walking around doing nothing. Jesus. Not really. They're, they're running around uh, carrying stuff. Um, and you have to keep a certain percentage of people in the worker force because those people, they do all the hard labor, like walking around carrying things and moving items and inventory and all that stuff. Um... So this will eventually change. There it is right there. Uh, just because I reassigned some people and that's it. So this just, just, it's nice just to have a, a handful of, uh, of notifications whenever something goes wrong. Playing Timberborn. Timberborn is just Notification City. Uh, there's always like a floating thing above, of, 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 of a stack of, 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 uh, of uh, floating warnings above your buildings. Um... Uh, something to note, and it's kind of a turn off, uh, is that you cannot, you cannot rotate the camera, um, freely when you're in a regular game mode. Like, I cannot tilt up any, any more, let me see, I'll show you from right here. Uh, like, this is down, or the highest up I could go, and this is, look at this, that's it. It's like 10 degrees, 5 degrees, maybe. Um, it's kind of annoying, like, really annoying, because I, 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 I feel like I'm falling over, even at this height, sometimes. Uh, I like to play a little bit lower than this, I think. Uh, but I do like when you zoom in that they give you a better view here. It looks really good. You can close. Like, this is a good looking game. Uh, you can hit F8, and then it gives you free camera mode. It's a little wonky, right? But, uh, you know, you're not really supposed to be here. But what's cool is you can get down here and really kind of, you know, check out the city. Yeah, look at that. Connect with your people. Look at that. Let me see. Whoa, okay. Sorry, I sped it up too much. Look at this guy. Is he wearing a hoodie? Who's this? Walk through the town. Wow, this is straight up World of Warcraft uh, uh, quality graphics. This is crazy. Finally, people. I haven't done this yet. It's cool to walk around and see everybody. Look at that warehouse. What's in the warehouse? Let's go see. Oh, man. You got stuff. You got stuff in the warehouse. 
It's crazy. What do we got up here? It's fireworks? Oh, okay. Just some berries and sticks, I guess. Look at this. Man, I wish the audio would uh, follow the camera. That would be a great experience in F8 mode. Hey, developer. Man, if you just attach the audio to the to the camera. <laughs> Anyways, so back to this. Yeah, I wish I could tilt the camera up myself. Um, uh, Graphics-wise, it's up to you to decide if you like it or not. Uh, I think that the, it, 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 there's a little bit of, like, a lot of jaggies. Uh, and I have everything on. Um, and there's not really a whole lot of stuff. Just a kind of quick gander here. Video. Yeah, there's only a handful of things. Uh, depth of field I have off. doesn't really do anything. Um, well, it does, but it kind of makes things a little bit blurry at a distance. Like, they're completely out of focus sometimes. <laughs> now it's fine, but I'll, sometimes I'll be doing something. I'll look, and it's completely out of focus. Um, so let me see. What else? Boy, boy, oh boy. Uh, I see expansion. Dude, this is cool. What I, what I really like about this uh, is that you can continue to add people to a single building. So when you first start out for me, like when I first started this build, uh, I just started building fishing. Right, so I was fishing uh, uh, huts, fishermen huts. I built like one or two or something, um, and then I uh, just kept expanding them. So like this one right here, I'll say expand, and then expand again, and then I think that's it. Uh, I don't know if that last one counted, uh, but now I can have. Oh yeah, I think it did. Uh, so I have four four people here. Increases the number here. It assigns them automatically over here. You don't get to see the names of the people that work here. I don't think. Uh, no, you don't. Okay. Then uh, this goes into. Uh, you know how it, what I described is like not being have not really having a connection with the people. It was enjoyable. Here we go, out of focus. See? <laughs> oh God! Let's see. Let me go turn off. He's at the field. Uh, there is a small modding community. Uh, it does have workshop workshop support. Let me actually go ahead and show you that. Let me see. There you go. Boop. Um, and it's it's uh, mostly most of these things are set like, like easy mode, super easy mode. Um, there's a lot of things in here that like make things easier for some reason. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I don't feel like the game is difficult. Uh, on, I, th I think it's, uh, I think it's good for a newcomer to come in and they'll have a good challenge. See, there's one text fixes this is a good one because it actually replaces and fixes a lot of text in the game, uh, for continuity. Oh yeah. The game was making noise back there. Uh, I forgot I have a set to run in the background. Uh, so this is kind of nice. Somebody went through and actually like kind of, uh, added some, um, unity to the, uh, uniformity to, to all of the uh, text and everything pretty rad. And then of course, uh, uh, localizations and all that stuff too. So, not quite, you know, what you'd expect, or, or not quite, like, Banish level. Banish has, like, all kinds of customization and everything, but, and, like, custom maps and all that, I think, I believe. Um, like, and so, but but they're, they're not quite there yet with, uh, with theirs. Let me see. You know, we're kind of, that's pretty much it. Like, the biggest thing, the biggest uh, thing I like about the game is the fact that it gives just so much data. You know, like this is this is the thing I miss in a lot of these games. You know, I I I love just being able to sit, just to look and see these uh, these charts, and um, uh, and that helps me determine like how I want to plan out you know certain items or whatever. And you could do this on a case on a case by case basis, and you can control the cap on a case by case basis. Like this is rad. This is really rad. Like this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> and and while while the UI feels big and and, and clunky and uh, and there's no way to have like all your good panels on the screen without covering up the entire game, right? Uh, or covering up uh, uh, over uh, on top of each other. Like it's there's still a lot of really good game in here, right? So so the last thing I'll talk about is that there is there is another like echelon here that I've not gotten into, and this is what I was talking about when I said that I'm in Act Two, going into Act Three. Uh, Act Three is when, and I, I don't know where it's at. Um, high Society, except is Gentry, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to do it yet, but you start to it, you start to bring in the more uh, gentle folk, right? The rich folks, right? And uh, they have their own needs. So you can see down here at the bottom. Uh, well, this right here. So this was the luxury, the gentry luxuries, I think, or something. One of these two is. So you have to create. They have their own needs that you have to cater to as well. But since it's really easy to make everybody happy, just make you know chairs or something. Um, that doesn't really seem to be a problem. Uh, let me see, Bookbinder, Cathedral, like, there's still so much here, right? I've done a lot, like, I have done a lot, and I was on stream just unlocking everything, because it's infinite money, boom, 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 unlocking everything, just time was holding me back. Um, and there's still so much here, so, so much, until you get to the Patron's Mansion, 9,000, 500, oh my god, 500 bricks, wow. 
Yes. Wait, I want to get that number down. 1,000. Yes. See? You see? The systems work. I have no complaint about that. The systems work. Yeah, I don't get to see the ship come in. Right? There's a ship floating around where that's just for, for looks. It's just floating around. Uh, you don't get to see the ships come in. The UI is a bit wonky and all this. Right? But it works. So if you're somebody who likes to nerd out on this kind of stuff like I do, uh, then this game could definitely uh, cater to that for sure. But if you're a banished owner and, you know, you haven't seen the workshop for that, like there's an infinite number of... Uh, of um mods out there for that it doesn't have the you know the, the the this whole interaction with the king or or these docks kind of systems or anything like that where you're buying and selling things uh from there i think they use like a merchant system that comes around every once in a while um but it's still God, is that it i don't even remember actually uh, but yeah it's it's got it's it's unique in that in that regard uh there are natural disasters they're very very infrequent when you play on uh the normal difficulty very infrequent um but the fires can't get out of control <laughs> as i've learned uh and so yeah it's it's there's a lot of numbers there's a lot of number of things here so if you're someone that lives into that kind of stuff man like this is perfect for you like i'm up late uh poking around at the games like this all the time and um and yeah this is a, it's a good one it's a good one a little rough around the edges but overall good one and plenty of information plenty of information all over the place so that's it my name is mike b aka phony the game is called patron a good city builder a good city builder. 1999 on Steam. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys.